Thank you, Dr. Peeler. Each the senator will have five minutes to ask questions, and I'll start. Uh, Dr. Peeler, I would agree with almost everything you've said, save one particular point. Uh, I visited a maximum detention facility in Illinois, and I asked if I could go into the area of isolation or solitary confinement, and I spoke to five of the inmates. Four of them uh, I could describe, but in the interest of time, I'll focus on one. He was a white male individual who looked to be about 35 years old. I asked him how long he was in. He said, originally 20 years, now 50. I said, how did it go from 20 to 50? He said, I told them that if they put anybody in the cell with me, I'd kill them, and I did. They put someone in there, and I killed him. I thought to myself, Durbin, get real. This individual cannot share a cell with anyone. I wouldn't want to. No one would want to. So there has to be some alternative for those who need to be isolated for their own sake and the sake of the guards and the other inmates. Having said that, I do believe that the examples that you've given and the ones that I've seen otherwise show the abuse of this practice in the extreme. To think that individuals are in incarcerated and isolated for months, if not years at a time, is unthinkable. Why is it if we have strong reactions against physical cruelty, we don't have any strong reaction against mental cruelty? And this is certainly cruel to even a person who would be described as normal, let alone those suffering from mental illness. Ms. Goodwin, is there any particular recommendation you'd like to point out of the 87 that you've made to the Bureau of Prisons that you think would make a difference? Thank you, Senator Durbin. So of those 87 recommendations, there are about 54 that remain open. Some of them do speak to the need to re-examine whether solitary confinement is the way to go. BOP itself is on record as saying it might not be the best way, particularly in terms of reducing recidivism. So we stand by the recommendations that we made, and we've been paying attention to the, rec to the, you know, the open recommendations and working closely with BOP to see how they plan to, to meet those. But there are some that speak to looking for alternatives to, to solitary confinement, looking for some way to, because there are people who do need to be cont contained and confined, and so asking BOP to think through ways that they might um, use alternatives to solitary confinement, alternatives to restrictive housing. Ms. Davis, did you have visitation by counselors or ministers or chaplains or anyone during the period of your uh, isolation? You need to turn the mic on. Thank you for that question, Senator Durbin. No, I did not. No one came back there to check on me. How long were you in? Solitary. The first, right? the first time I was in, I was in there 30 days due to overcrowdedness on the compound. There was no beds. And then and subsequently, were you incarcerated in similar fashion? Yes. How for how long, how long a period of time? A year and a half. Could you tell me the general nature of the offense that led to your isolation? Uh, well, I was, I was airport, I was airlifted to Danbury because that's where I was designated to do my time. And the first time uh, that I came there, I was put in solitary confinement because once again, there was no beds available for me uh, to uh, be in. So they put me in segregation housing. What about the subsequent time for a year and a half? Because what? they said I made a three-way call in, three-way phone call. Three-way phone call? Yes. That's the time when my daughter was in a terrible accident. And when I called home to speak with my sister, she uh, switched over and made the call to, uh, to the hospital where my daughter was at. So that is considered a three-way call, and it violated uh, BOP uh, rules. Did you ask for any counseling, medical counseling or otherwise? Yes. Once I was released out of uh, segregation housing, I went to my counselor, Ms. Bidwell, and she told me I had to fill out um, a call out to speak with a counselor. And when I did that, no one ever answered my call out. Dr. Peeler, you mentioned uh, North Dakota, I believe. It appears that they have done on a statewide basis some reforms that have virtually eliminated solitary. Is that true? The program that I looked at looked um, at several prisons within North Dakota, and they have drastically reduced it by about 25 percent. I'm not sure if it, it was across the entire state or not, but in the, in the two main men's prisons, the study did not include the women's prison, Solitary confinement has been drastically, drastically reduced. 
I would just say, uh, before I hand it off here, uh, that this is frustrating for me. I've been involved in this for 12 years. Uh, an article by Dr. Atul Gawande inspired me to get into this issue. I cannot understand how states are showing such leadership in this area, and we are failing so badly. I'm going to call on Director Peters clearly to explain why she has not implemented the GAO recommendations and hold her accountable for that. Senator Graham. Uh, 